You're in the Business Insurance Zone with me, Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and contributing author to Backroom Technician. This week on The Biz, the video sales soap opera series. And on today's show, asset allocation and appreciated real estate with special co-host and co-creator of Selling Technologies, Jerry Marinardi. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use. Well, welcome everyone to the Business Insurance Zone. I'm your host, Steve Savant, and we're broadcasting to a nationwide audience of financial advisors right here in Fountain Hills, Arizona, home of America's Largest Fountain. And with us today, day three of Selling Technologies Business Killers, Jerry Mayernardi. Hey, Jerry. Steve, good to see you. Well, good to see you. Hey, we're talking about business killers all this week. We're talking about a little bit of touching on Amanda, the platform. And again, if you want to go out there, just go out to our site, www.businesskillers.com forward slash the biz. Go out there and do a 30 day free trial drive on this. I noticed, by the way, when I'm looking at Amanda, what does Amanda stand for? I mean, I expected, honestly, I'm sorry to say this, I expected some female to appear on the video right. and say, Welcome everyone, my name is Amanda. Amanda is an acronym <laughs> yeah. for Accelerated Marketing for Agencies, Networks, Distributors, and Associates. Well, who thought of that? Was that you or your that brother? That was actually my brother. Your brother. Way to go, so. Michael. Okay, appreciate <laughs> that. I love this idea though because you are, we're talking about appreciated real estate today. We're talking about asset allocation and we're never talking about products. No. You are so issue-based. That's why filing for this, this isn't even a FINRA issue because you're really not talking about anything like this. You're just talking about the issues. You're talking about evoking what people are thinking about, business owners. Talk a little bit about that because I think this is a hard, I think it's a hard transition. We've been product oriented, then we become planning oriented, right? Yes. And now we're doing, oh, forget that. We're talking front end issues. Correct. Emotional. Exactly. There is so much. If you want video on a particular topic or you want a white paper, it's out there, mm -hmm. you know, by the thousands. Mm -hmm. But to really engage somebody, you know that it's you have to have the person emotionally involved. Mm -hmm. Once you have them emotionally involved, the tactical solutions, they're much more mm -hmm. open to considering tactical solutions. But if they're not emotionally involved, you're, you're just another product salesman. You're just someone out there with something to sell. And let's face it, the industry has had a black eye since 2008 and the halo effect reaches into insurance and financial services. Oh, yeah. So how do you take the curse off of that? Because mm -hmm. honestly, our products are great, mm -hmm. but don't talk about products. So when I go to issue-based selling, I'm really pushing aside, I'm setting aside products. I'm setting aside planning. I'm thinking, you know, I'm a tactical planner. I'm doing goals, strategic strategies, tactical planning, and looking at how product inserts into each one of those categories. And my Jesuit upbringing now is being set aside for what? Issue-based selling. Talking about the emotion of a client. Just now, by the way, we're just now getting into doing financial profiles on clients, the psychological, how much can you take after 2008? People were thinking they had a, they were ready for the market and it turned out they were not ready for it. And when it went down, people were so depressed and they had emotional issues and feelings and things that we never even discovered before. Risk tolerance taken on a more of an emotional or issue-based issue, not statistical. Nobody's talking about your beta risk when you're thinking about, hey, I just lost 35 to 40% of my 401k. Right, and, and, and again, it, you can't come in and start a conversation around that topic. Mm -hmm. It's a non-starter. Well, I wanna show you a video clip on asset allocation. I think you're gonna find this really great. What's wrong, honey? Can't sleep? No, no, I'm fine. I, I'm sorry I woke you. Oh, Charlie, talk to me. Well, it's probably nothing, but... But what? Well, you know I've been talking about retiring and selling the business in a couple of years. Yes, and you said you contacted some companies and that the prospects look good. Mm-hmm. Until this international group came into the picture. What group? Oh, they're huge, multinational. And they have plenty of money to invest in marketing and R&D. What's that got to do with our retirement? Honey, they're undercutting our prices. They're buying up raw materials right and left. They're making it practically impossible for me to compete. Which makes it harder to sell the business. Those companies I've been talking to? 
some of them are backing off already. You think they're anxious to go head-to-head -head against a big outfit like that? They wouldn't do any better than me, and they know it. Well, what if you were to sell to this international group? Have you considered that? Well, sure, but uh, they know I can't compete with them, and I'd get half of what the company is worth. Charlie. Oh, it's my own fault. I, I should have listened to Ray, planned ahead, made investments. <laughs> I can hear him now. Charlie, that's what you pay me for. Oh, please. How could you know something like this would happen? Right. You know, nobody saw this coming. And my business... It's your life. It's the one thing I know. And I thought if anything would pay off for me. For us. Come on. We don't know what's going to happen. That's the point. These are the stories that keep people up at night. Jerry, this is a great clip. I thought it, I thought it was a sleep apnea issue. <laughs> Every business owner can relate. Mm -hmm. Every business owner loses sleep over their business. Mm -hmm. And now, in th that particular situation, to have the wealth of their business suddenly disappear overnight is a huge issue. Unreal. When we come back from the break, we're going to talk more about appreciated real estate and watch another powerful video. And don't forget, you can try Business Killers absolutely free for 30 days. Just hop out to our site, www.businesskillers.com forward slash the biz. You're listening to the insurance industry's number one resource for products, planning ideas, carrier information, and interviews you can use. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use. Did you know the average 401k runs out of money just seven to eight years into retirement? Time Magazine, The Wall Street Journal, and many other publications have warned of the difficulty of saving with a 401k. But what if there was a way to create tax-free lifetime retirement income with no stock market risk? Good news, there is. You know, living in fear of the next market dive is not the way I want to live my life. Why would I go out there and take on risk when I don't need to? I have a lot less stress knowing I can't lose any more of my retirement savings in the stock market. Call now to receive your free, no obligation analysis of what this retirement vehicle could do for you. A comparison to your current retirement plan and a free video that explains this exciting opportunity. Start planning a retirement you can enjoy instead of worrying about future tax increases and stock market losses. Creating income that will last your entire life is the most important thing you'll ever do. Take control of your future. Call now for your free analysis, comparison, and video. Well, welcome back to the Business Insurance Zone. I'm Steve Simon with Jerry May and Marty. And remember, you can order today's materials at The Biz. And while you're out there, click on the background technician icon and hit the Biz blog where I write all my blogs for a 30-day free trial offer for the best needs analysis and education material that address almost every financial planning scenario. And just a heads up, before moving forward with anything that we talk about on the show, always consult your tax advisor or legal counsel, as well as your broker-dealer compliance officer if you're FINRA licensed. We're in the middle of talking about business killers, and we're going to move into talking a little bit about appreciated real estate. Now listen, after the, after the complete debacle of real estate here in Arizona, I don't know how it was where you're from in Philly, but it was murder out here. And Vegas and Phoenix, parts of California, we're just now recovering. And I can't believe they're using the word appreciated real estate now. I mean, it's just it's right. kind of funny. Right. Well, again, people aren't considering how appreciated real estate affects their overall estate planning needs mm -hmm. and how it's going to impact them now that, God willing, the uh, recovery values, yeah. are, values are starting yeah. to go up. I hope, hopefully you're right. I'm holding my, I'm holding my breath. Yeah. But, it, but really, a lot of our planners are really taken back because real estate, appreciated real estate, is the bulk of some estates that are so big. And after this kind of devaluation approach, now things are kind of on the upswing. I've seen commercial real estate kind of making a rebound, residential housing, and some, not all, some agricultural businesses are now starting to see a little bit of flatlining. They're not going down, they're flatlining, kind of go, it's getting ready to go up. 
I think the economy is poised. I mean, there's over trillions of dollars sitting on the sidelines here, and some of this has got to be falling into real estate. But I know that people are always thinking about this, especially in retirement. What am, what's my real estate going to be worth? Is this really a big piece of what I'm going to transfer to my children? So appreciated real estate's kind of on the mend right now, so it's really become a topic. And I think you're going to see a little bit of REITs and LPs, real estate LPs, limited partnerships, kind of start making a, a, a comeback as an alternative investment tool, for, especially for income. Right. And the impetus for us actually creating that uh, farmer uh, real estate segment was the Marcella Shale that was all throughout Pennsylvania and up into Ohio, where folks that were running these small farms suddenly became millionaires overnight and not understanding the overall impact of that. And I think it, it, that also filters down to the business owners or to the wealthy individuals who have, as you said, a lot of real estate in their portfolio mm -hmm. and how has it impacted it, how has it factored into their overall retirement planning? I mean, oil and gas leasing, I mean, we're discovering a lot of things, these sands in Canada. I mean, regular land that was used for agriculture, all of a sudden it's used, oh my gosh, it's gonna be energy oriented. Yep. It's gonna be huge. I wanna show you this clip that deals with appreciated real estate, especially on this farmer issue, because I think it's a great clip, and it really gives, I love the home spin that this video brings to the table. Watch this. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> One more, do the other. All right, all right. Hey, Dad. Steven, I got some news. Wait, wait. Have you got any water in the truck? Yeah, I got some. We'll give it to you in a second. Listen, Jonathan Warner just left the house. Yeah. He dropped by to let us know that his dad's selling the farm, and he wants to know if we're interested. I just saw Big John a few weeks ago. He, he didn't mention anything. He said things were going pretty good this year. Well, I think Jonathan and the rest of the kids just didn't want to deal with the ups and downs of the business anymore. After their folks talked it over, they figured they'd sell out now. Well, Jonathan's got that marketing degree. I guess he's going to give that a shot. I guess. <sighs> That's a shame. You know, that family's been farming that land for 50 years, I bet. Yeah, at least. Uh, did he say what they were asking? 800000 But they're going to sell the tractors and the rest of the machinery separately. <laughs> That's a lot of money. I think I'll give Big John a call. Yeah, but you know, Dad, if Zach and I are going to farm, we're going to need more land. You know as well as I do, the only way to ensure that land's going to be available is to own it. Yeah, we're going to have to think about financing. Remember a couple of years ago when Dad got sick? I mean, we had a really rough time of it. Yeah, well, let me call the bank and set up a time to go in and talk to them about it. Huh? You boys in? All right. Uh. Tractor first, phone call second. <laughs> And where do we find the money when it's dad's turn to retire? I mean, how does that happen without us having to sell out too? Jerry, I love that clip. That was a really great clip. Thank you. Um, yeah, we, we try and keep these things emotionally dense so that we touched on in that particular clip everything from succession planning in a farming family to the impact of the real estate on the person's portfolio, as well as we touched on the disability potential with the father. I love all that. Well, remember, you can watch our today's show and all this week. Just hop out to our site at www.thebiz.tv and follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. That's the buzz on the biz for today. You've been in the zone, the business insurance zone. You're listening to the insurance industry's number one resource for products, planning ideas, carrier information, and interviews you can use. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use.